A year ago tonight, 15 tornadoes wiped out parts of the Miami Valley. You need to be in the lowest interior part of a sturdy structure. Get there now. I remember her getting really teary-eyed. This is a dangerous situation that has been ongoing as this. I'm sorry, I'm getting choked. It's okay. There was something in both McCall's voice and my wife's voice that said, you better move. For the last 12 months, New Center 7 has walked the streets in the neighborhood's hardest hit to see how our community is rebuilding and how far we still have to go a year after the Memorial Day tornadoes. Still so powerful a year later. Hello, I'm James Brown, and New Center 7 is looking at just how far our community has come since those 15 tornadoes hit our viewing area a year ago tonight. Now, we are visiting those communities hit the hardest. And today, we have Team 7 coverage for you. My co-anchor, Cheryl McHenry, is in Trotwood looking at how communities are rebuilding. But first, let's check in with Chief Meteorologist McCall Vrydegs. McCall, you were here the night of the storms. Hundreds of thousands of people watched you as you spent hours tracking those tornadoes. Well, that's right, James. As I was watching those tornadoes ripping through the area, I knew exactly what the damage was going to look like the next day. I'm in part of Dayton where the tornado was at its strongest. It was coming out of Harrison Township, making its way towards the Dayton area. And I'm at the Foxton Court Apartments. And you can see that not much has changed since the moment the tornado struck here. There are pieces of the apartment everywhere. Off to my right hand side, you can see that the roof at this apartment was completely ripped off. If you were to peer inside, which I had the opportunity to do so, all of the personal effects are still there from mattresses to televisions to clothing. Anything that you yourself might have in your home is still left in these apartments. And I know the RTA at one point came over here to help evacuate the tenants in these apartments and they never came back. The rebuilding process never happened here. But that is not the same for everyone. In fact, we had the opportunity to go just about a mile down the road to Sam Anderson's home on Loretta Drive. It was struck by the tornado that night and he's still rebuilding now. This is my residence, the house I grew up in. It was my father's house. We got the siding going on now. We got the roof on. Just try to get things finished up from the tornadoes from last year. Well, as you can see in this video here, Sam and his friends are still working to put the siding on and put the pieces of his home back together. So we're sending a lot of prayers his way and to many Miami Valley residents across the region uh, dealing with the effects of the tornado still one year later. And again, we had 15 tornadoes that hit the Miami Valley. We have a special presentation that we aired just a few weeks after the Memorial Day outbreak called Memorial Day Tornadoes, a community rises. And you can check that out over on our free streaming app. It's available on your Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, and your smart TV app store. Also, while you're there, you can see my three piece series walking the path of the storm where I checked out areas that were hit by the biggest tornado that night from Brookville all the way through Riverside. Now, one spot along the location that was hit the hardest was Trotwood, and that's where we have anchor Cheryl McHenry. McCall, I am in the Westbrook neighborhood of Trotwood where an EF4 tornado tore through at approximately 1057 that night. Now look at your screen. We want to show the difference on Sky 7. The damage the next day is in the upper left of your screen and what it looks like today is in the lower right. Every house was damaged last year, some more than others. Remember, the winds came roaring through here at about 170 miles an hour, ripping off roofs, uprooting trees, breaking destruction all throughout this neighborhood. Now, at, you see Sky 7 today, uh, Chuck Hamlin was out here again and shot this video just a couple of hours ago. You can see the progress that's been made, still a ways to go for some, and a few houses, fr quite frankly, waiting to be torn down, but what a difference a year has made in this particular neighborhood that was so hard hit last year. One of the three strongest tornadoes hit Beaver Creek that night, and an EF3 it was, tore across that part of Greene County. And New Center 7's John Biddell spent a lot of time in Beaver Creek in the weeks following the storm. He went back today to check and see how folks are doing there today. 
I'm at the corner of Wendover and Rushton here in Beaver Creek. This neighborhood near 675 in Colonel Glen, one of the hardest hit by those storms a year ago tonight. There's still signs of destruction here. For instance, I'm standing where a foundation and a house used to be, but now it's just a hole in the middle of a vacant lot. But there are also plenty of signs of progress of the rebuilding effort in the same neighborhood, like these two houses here behind me, two of many here that have been either repaired or totally rebuilt signs of resiliency here in Beaver Creek. I want you to look at your TV screen right now. If you look closely at the view from Sky 7 Wednesday, you can almost still see the path an EF3 took over Beaver Creek's Garden View neighborhood. And all the trees that were gone, all the foam poles were gone, all the lines were gone. Uh, we were the hardest hit plat in Beaver Creek. We're the ones that had to evacuate for two days. It destroyed parts of Joe Howard's block. My garage was destroyed with two cars. He's persevered through problems he said he had with a shoddy contractor and rebuilt. Some homes here were leveled and have stayed that way. Others are still heavily damaged, tarped, and abandoned. But many of Howard's neighbors have chosen to rebuild, just like him. Here in Beaver Creek, there's pride in that. No, we're just very, uh, very uh, proud of the residents. There's going to be a, a, a lot of uh, time still to celebrate in the future, celebrate the rebuilding, celebrate the no lives lost. Those are key issues. Uh, you can replace a building, but uh, no lives were lost. It's, it's a miracle uh, truly here uh, in Beaver Creek. And no, we're quite proud. The progress uh, has moved along probably as quickly as we could even imagine. The pandemic put a hold on a celebration marking one year of recovery here in Beaver Creek. But city leaders say they'll still hold it at some point because what they've gone through and risen out of together is worth marking. It's going to take that uh, celebration in groups and crowds that uh, to help uh, relieve some of the uh, emotional scars that these uh, uh, the people affected by the tornado suffer. We can rebuild every house in the in the area and it still doesn't take care of the emotional part of the uh, people that uh, live through it. Both the mayor and the city manager here in Beaver Creek told me they might look ahead to the second anniversary of the storms in 2021 to hold a celebration here in Beaver Creek to mark this community's progress and help everybody heal. In Beaver Creek, I'm John Bedell, New Center 7. Thanks, John. And the pandemic has also slowed some of the progress that was being made here in Trotwood. I've talked to some of the people here, and of course, they can't get out and celebrate today either because of that. Our coverage of the Memorial Day tornadoes com continues on WHIO.com and our WHIO News app. It's also on our streaming app, WHIO TV Now. There you can watch our Memorial Day tornado special, A Community Rises. It's a an hour-long documentary. We've also added our three-part Walking the Path series with Chief Media. Meteorologist McCall Brightags. You don't want to miss that if you didn't get a chance to see it. Uh, the streaming app is free to download on your Roku, Apple TV, or Amazon Fire and Smart TV app stores. James, for now, I'm going to send it back to you, and I'll see you here in about 10 minutes. All right. The community's resiliency, again, never ceases to amaze me. Cheryl McHenry, mm -hmm. live this afternoon. We'll see you in just a bit. And right now,